everybody, welcome back to the dumbest modeling channel on all of YouTube. Uh, we're gonna get started with with our Leopard 2A6 from Agora, parts pack one. Um, it's uh, I'm looking forward to this but build for sure. Let's uh, let's get my ugly mug off screen there, and we've got our parts now. Instructions. <clears throat> like I said, Agora does not. In, well, during the unboxing, I said Agora does not give you uh, paper instructions. They just don't do the paper thing. Fine with me. Uh, we've actually got. Uh, here we go. So we just pull up the PDF. They are all downloadable from the website. Um, and uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. Uh, here's you know the addendum they include in pack one. And uh, here's some interesting little things, you know, push the parts together, uh, don't over tighten, pay attention to orientation, use a hammer. Oh, this is my favorite thing now. Use a hammer. That's pretty awesome. Um, so, yeah, we got our little, uh, what are these little delicate hammers with a, uh, we have a copper head on one side, and we've got a plasticky, nylon y type non marring head on the other side. So, if we got a pound on anything, we're going to use this delicate little tiny tapper right here. Um, of course, you got to have your 3-in-1 oil if you're building a part work out of metal because, just because, <laughs> it's been proven. Um, if you don't have 3-in-1 oil, you might be able to get away. WD-40 stinks a little. Any light, really light oil will work fine. Um, and we got some multi-purpose grease. Uh, this stuff's very small, very expensive, uh, silicone grease. But it's it's dielectric, clean, tasteless, good sealing, translucent, prevents oxidation. Uh, it's technically food safe, but this stuff's great not only for lubing uh, your kegerator O-rings, but also uh, putting schmoo in your gearboxes if you want a little extra schmoo, if anything needs any lubing. Other than that, we're using basic hand tools. And like I said, I'm going to be weathering this, so I have some, some matte coat from Mr. Hobby. Any hobby-grade... Uh, Clear coat will do if you want to weather over the factory paint. I've been told this is enamel paint, uh, but I don't believe it's clear coated. I can kind of tell. I can feel the paint. It's I, it's not clear coated. Um, so I just want to make sure we don't damage the existing finish on this kit when we add some weathering. So I'll cover that in a later part of the build. But uh, let's well let's let's get started, as they say. All right, one sec. <clears throat> okay, um, so we're getting started. I flat cleared a few pieces already. Uh, we've got some more drying over here on little stickies. Uh, again, you know, just give them a little spray with this. Um, if you want to clear coat them, these little these little clippy sticks, uh, alligator clip sticks, and these bases come in handy for painting small parts. So I'm I'm gonna go through this build and just build everything. I'm just gonna build stuff. I'm not gonna record every screw. But when I come across potential gotcha <laughs> this stage it says to use four cp screws on the bottom of here to screw this together i'm like yeah no big deal well i look at the baggies and you know uh labeled it's hard to see because they just print on the bag there's am and uh we've got we've got ap and there's nothing labeled cp and then there was this one bag that doesn't say a dang thing on it okay if all other options are not CP, the only option must be CP. That's all I'm saying. So we're going to put these screws in, and we will be right back. Okay, when you're squeezing in these little sight glasses, really, really press them in good and firm. Make sure there's no gaps at the top there. Uh, they're pretty nice. I'm not going to color these. A lot of times I, I treat my sight glasses. Um, I may do the sticker treatment for them where I take some aluminum-like uh, tape and spray it with some clear color, like blue or green, and pop it in there. Uh, I'll see how I feel about that later on. But, yeah, it's a very nice piece so far. The pieces are very well painted, very well molded, crisp. They have the rivets. <laughs> yeah, I like it so far. We'll be right back with some more stages if we run into a gotcha. We'll definitely let you know. Okay, well, we're, we're not going, like I said, we're not going screw by screw, step by step, but, uh, you know, part of step two here is to, to assemble the aluminum, yes, aluminum gun barrel, and uh, here's where I'm impressed. Okay, let me do this. So, so they give you this piece that has camouflage on it that you have to screw into this piece. Um, they're both threaded, so that's nice, 
And then watch what happens with the camouflage pattern. Not what you were expecting, huh? Yeah, they got it all matched up. I, I mean, assuming they put it together and then either they have some crazy robotic painting process or they put it together, then painted it, then took it back apart so that we could put it together and feel like we've accomplished something. But uh, the gun barrel is very nice. Uh, skinny thing, got to put a hand behind it for the focus. But yeah, the bore evacuator is pretty nice. Not too bad of a seam line. I mean, it's visible, but it's it's somewhat minimal. And uh, weathering hides many sins, which is why we weather a lot of stuff. I screwed the uh, the commander's hatch onto the upper part of the, the turret here, and uh, it fits very nicely and looks very good. And uh, it is spring-loaded, so you can pop it out, open her up, and that's to let the little commander stick out and get shot at by enemy forces. That's always what we want, right? Here we go. We're going to run her, keep her buttoned up for now. Oh, there we go. So, yeah, anything like this, you know, uh, you expect uh, some some fitment issues or weirdness, but so far it's, it's gorgeous. It's coming together nice. We flat cleared this part. It also toned down the shininess a bit on the, uh, the German logos there. So that's very nice. And uh, we will continue. Be right back. This is your first of many reminders to dip your metal screws. If it's an AM, BM, CM, BM. <laughs> if it's a metal screw going in the metal, make sure to dip them into the three-in-one one oil. Um, it just, it, it averts many potential pitfalls. When these things are, are manufactured and then they, you know, they drill and tap these holes they paint they paint or powder coat them afterwards and it's quite often they're a little little hard to get in so i'm already using a little effort um with the three in one oil but without it you're doomed in certain cases you will snap that screw off and not be able it's just we don't want to go there okay that's every part work doesn't matter if it's a gora hatchet diagostini not a eagle moss anymore at least uh fan home all of them, even ones I'm not mentioning, always lube your metal screws. Just a tiny dab, three-in-one oil. You dip the screw in, and that's that, okay? I'm going to say it every damn time, but it will make your life easier. So we've got, ah, look at that. Got all the hatches in there. Very nice, very nice. We already showed you the commander's hatch. Uh, we got the little sight block in there. There are sight blocks in the front. There we go. Looking very nice. This is, yeah, yeah, nice. I like this tank. It looks good so far, and I didn't paint it. So I would say the best eggplant parmesan is the one that you didn't have to make. If you don't like eggplant parmesan, there's always chicken parmesan. But, ah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the paint job from the factory on this. And now that I've flat cleared it, it evened out the tones of all the paints. Remember, this green was a bit glossier than all this, and obviously, um, you know, the, the, the roundel, the, the, the German insignia there was, was very shiny, um, which is not the case in real life. Um, everything is pretty flat on military vehicles. So now it's nice and even, and uh, I think it looks a lot better with just a little flat clear on it. Uh, it looks fine coming out of the box, but this, this is nicer. It's just like getting a pre-built tank. It looks fine out of the box, but if you just even hit it with flat clear, it all, all of a sudden, wow, it looks much better. Just like that. Magic of flat clear. We'll be right back. Okay, I didn't say I was doing a screw-by-screw -screw video, but look at this. Here we go. So you can't say I didn't show you screwing in one screw. Um, so this is a, a step four, part stage four. I, I always get confused with these part works. Everyone talks about the stages differently. But yeah, we've got that front upper hull armor section on there. Looks nice, especially with the flat clear. Honestly, even if you're not going to weather this thing, I would hit all these parts with flat clear. It, it just makes it all... It makes it all blend together really nice because it's just you got this part's plastic this is metal this is plastic um the finishes no matter how good you know you try finishes are always slightly different uh on different mediums even if you're trying to use the same color code paint um the you know injection molded plastic being colored you know or even painted versus metal getting uh painted and or powder coated or however they're doing it um i think 
Well, Todd, my uh, Marvel PHX, the My Parks guy said, uh, it's usually enamel paint. That's fine. But yeah, the the clear definitely uh, definitely looks to be the way to go. Um, in my opinion, that's all. I mean, I love this thing, but I love all tanks. But this is uh, just a little extra nice. Oh, no, track links. I'm looking at the instructions. Okay, we got to build track links. Okay, we're going to build a couple track links. Um, and then I'm going to just collect all of the track links from this entire kit and just save them up. And when I'm on like a live stream with the guys for a few hours, I'll just I'll just be tapping together track links the whole time, annoying everyone with the noise of of my little baby hammer going. All right, we'll be right back. Okay, so some track links. Also, hey, use German screwdrivers if you're building a German tank. Um, they just make really good micro screwdrivers. Uh, Viha, I know it's spelled Weha, but or Weha, or Weha, it's We Viha. Um, what else are good? Uh, what are those other ones? Oh, I don't know. Damn it. I can't remember the names now. I forget. Uh, I just don't have any of them. Uh, so here we go. Uh, I opened up a pack of track links. There is some oily residue on these rubber track pads. Um, not an issue, really. I mean, you'll drive them and they'll, uh, they'll get cleaned off right quick. However, I want to weather these tracks up to make them look more like the photo. Um, you can't see it. On the front of the like manual and all the pictures I use, where... Uh, the tracks are actually rather uh, oxidized, rusted. Uh, they all get that way, but I want to uh, <clears throat> do some of that. So I'm going to put together a couple of these for you. Uh, there we go. Let's just carefully dump our parts out. Um, do we have any more? Yeah, there's some goop schmoo. There's schmoo on all these these there links. Oh, these are nice. They're uh, rubber padded on the road surface and the inner wheel surface. Uh, they're nicely molded. They're pre-finished in, uh, you know, like a metallic-y gray, which is nice. Uh, so I'll figure out a way. I'm probably just going to, like, just, like, dunk them in a bowl of isopropyl alcohol. But, uh, they have a front and the back. So follow the instructions closely. Um, this, so this is the orientation you want to send. See this block here? You want that to the back, and you want these two little, these two little, out juts of squareness to the front. So we do that to the back, do that to the front, and then we've got to take a uh, center link. So there's inner center links and outer locking links. That's the difference. This is an inner center link, and that is an outer locking link. So that's uh, that's an important thing to note and you want the little nub facing up on the inner center link yeah this is uh yeah very specific okay so make sure the inner center link it doesn't have any dips in the middle of it the outer link that has that little like you know dip in the middle there um but it's basically you're gonna you're gonna put this you're gonna put this in there. Okay. Let's see here. Okay. Yeah, this is gonna get a little this is definitely gonna get a tiny bit fiddly. What do you expect from track links though? Track links are fiddly things. Get the other link right up next to it. And then we're gonna we're gonna scroll down our instructions and we're gonna take our outer link, okay? And we want the flat side facing up. And we're gonna slide that through there. And then it's gonna be there we go. Just hold it together. And then they push through nice and easy and then we're gonna take our outer track link with the little dip side facing down okay so we have our track teeth up okay let's see here interesting so this is a uh, this is Oh, sorry. This is a press fit. 
situation we've got ourselves. And, uh, let's see here. Fighting a little bit. Let's see if we can... Oh, there we go. Let me put this on the flat thing here. Crackety whack. Crackety whack. Don't talk back. And you hammer it in until those pins are flush. And then there we go. Working track links. Now do that five million more times. Uh, preferably during a live stream. Hanging out with your buddies on Friday night on Hobby Time Modelers. Um, you guys can go to their channel and check it out. Uh, but there we go. Okay. So I'm not going to do a whole video of these things. Um, <laughs> we get it. You know, you push two together. And it's the same process for the next one. You know, put a link in, in the middle, add another track section, push a pin through, hammer on the little end cap. And uh, I don't think these need any glue whatsoever. These these are these are solidly put together. These, these should be good. And yeah, they're not going anywhere. And they're all metal. So that's quite nice. And it's a little nicer quality than some of the cast metal tracks I've seen some from ready-to-run tank companies. I'm not going to name names, but um, they're, they sometimes leave a little bit to be desired. Um, and since these are coated already from the factory, maybe they won't suffer from uh, zinc rot like some other uh, companies have their tracks have done. But there we go. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I built, I built one track link for you. Oh, well, two. Sort of. One and a half, I guess. But yeah, there we go. We'll be right back with some more action. Okay, another little tip here to keep an eye out for. So this is this is part of that side wing armor at the front of the turret. You'll see that tiny little notch in the hole there. And there's a corresponding little guy right there. See that little tab? That's the way to go in. Okay, just so you know. Um, and then another little tip, these screw bags have the letters painted on them in black, you know, in black ink. They're not like a little white piece of paper with letters on it, so it's hard to see. So if you put the baggies on a light colored surface, you can read the bag uh, codes for the screws much easier that way. So I'm going to get these screwed together. We got this little guy also. Uh, same situation. There's little notches in those holes of the parts. And then this part specifically has those two little tabs that go in those notches. So um, just like, just like so. So make sure you get those those little tabs aligned with those little notches. You can't put these in wrong, and the right handle will not go in the wrong spot very easily. Okay, so there we go. Jeez, I'm zoomed in. Okay, ha. Huh. We'll be right back. Okay, another little uh, little tip here. So if we um, if we look at the instructions, you can see here. Let's see. Let's zoom in on that a little bit. There we go. Um, you can see that uh, they have you put these tabs in a certain way to hold the two pieces together, and um, it's actually backwards. So I'm going to let them know that, I think. Um, but you're going to put the tabs the opposite way with those wider parts at the back and the skinnier parts at the front because this piece, this armor wing, should swing out. Uh, in real life, this is so that they, when they rotate the turret uh, 90 degrees, they swing these out, and that allows them uh, access to the engine compartment for maintenance. Uh, when I installed it, as the instructions said, it only came out about to there. And that wasn't cool. Um, because it should come out all the way to here. But now it's fine. Uh, it's just that little piece of CAD drawing uh, had it backwards. So just make note of that. You want... Because this, this metal thing, see? It's got those little... Those little, those little fingers there that need to hit that, that wide part of those little brackets. And that's what stops it from opening any further. Uh, but they were in the front instead of being in the back before. So just a little tip um, that'll help save you some frustration. Watch my videos. I go over all the little gotchas. Uh, it's not a major problem. It's just the instructions. They just had 
had a CAD drawing flip-flopped. But either way, we'll be right back. Okay, we got this on. Um, just mind you, this part, really, you got to snap it in there before you put the screws in. Like, it, it's snappy. It, it fits fine. You just got to really snap it in there. It's nice and positive. Uh, it's, a, it's a satisfying click you get. You know those satisfying clicks? Yeah. So there's our wing armor um, or access, you know, just armor. A it's just access, really. It's It's not like they put these things out to, like, add extra shielding for troops walking behind them. It's not, it's just, it's purely mechanical when they're working on the engines on the tanks in real life. It does have a screw here with a captive uh, E-clip to uh, tighten her down to the side of the turret. So we're going to do that anyway, but I just wanted to, it was my OCD. I just wanted this thing to open and close like in real life. And it was simply a flipping of a part in a CAD drawing on the instructions. But there we go. Look at that. Beautiful. The, the, the first pack, they're going to give you the beauty parts because they want you to see how awesome this thing is going to be when it's done. Uh, it's kind of the part work and modus operandi. They always give you some glamorous parts uh, for the first stages. Um, some stages are quite boring, actually. I mean, we all, anyone who's built part work knows it. But yeah, this is this is coming out really, really very nice. Um, you know what? The paint job's damn decent, especially with the flat clear. I'm pretty happy with this. We'll be right back. So, um, on uh, you know, part stage seven, um, <clears throat> we actually have the correct uh, orientation for these two little tabs on uh, stage seven, step nine. So. They're correct on seven, step nine. Uh, they're backwards on the other stage I showed you before. So th that's just one of the, just, just point that out for everybody. That's the proper way that they should be um, looking here. There you go with the, with the tabs to the rear sticking out. <clears throat> that's the correct way. All right, so there we go. I'll be right. Uh, I guess I'll be right back with uh, with some beauty shots here momentarily. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, just so I could reiterate getting this panel on here. Um, you know, the little posts in the holes line up rather nicely. And it's a... Uh, it's a bit of a... There we go. Air. Air. Ah, yeah. It's it it's a it, it it snaps into place very tightly. Um, partially, it might be we got a little we got a little flat clearing those holes, and the tolerances on these kits are pretty tight to begin with. Um, but yeah, there's our armor plate moves forward. So we just got to throw a couple of BP screws in here, and we will be right back. Well, would you look at that? We've got all of our little armory things on there. They look very nice. Everything's been flat cleared. <clears throat> my finger was popping that up. And my finger's popping that one up. <laughs> but look at how nice that looks. That's pretty slick. And getting the same finish on metal, the same color of metal to match the same color of plastic, the flat clear really helps uh, even them out just a little bit. Oh, that looks so good. Okay, well, there we go. Um, uh, we got, we got one more piece. We got the bustle to get in there. A few bits go with that. <clears throat> we're collecting our track links, of course, for a, uh, for a live stream where we're just hanging out with the guys. We'll just build track links, but we'll be right back with, uh, this bustle on, and that will be the end of pack one of the Agora 2A6 Leopard main battle tank. BRB. So when I say to dip your screws into the, uh, three and one oil before threading them in metal screws only you know metal screws going into metal not going into plastic um a lot of them do fit fine just without the oil it's just every now and then you'll get a hole where you don't want to snap that screw and voila look at that we got the whole upper half of our turret pretty much well mostly i mean the structure is all done we just gotta you know put on smoke dischargers and bustle baskets and man that looks pretty badass, I have to say. That is nice. Yeah. Oh, 
Well, let me know what everybody thinks down in the uh, in the comments. Um, I didn't burp on the video because there may be Germans watching this one, and they're not they're not too you know uh, fond of uh, of oral flatulence uh, during a YouTube build video. So I am refraining. Um, there we go. Look at that. Oh, that is so nice. Awesome. Okay. I'm pretty happy. What do you guys think? You know, uh, looks, looks pretty awesome. I'm, uh, I'm very happy with this. Uh, I clearly have to color correct my video in some way, shape or form. Um, the different cameras and the lighting and the, they don't all get along and jive, but there we go. Uh, we'll be back next time with pack two and some more parts. And this is going to get lovely so far. I'm pretty happy with it. All right, everyone. Adios. Thanks for watching.